In this video, I'll derive the gamma distribution. This is a probability density function. We call it that because we, we're dealing with a continuous variable that calculates the probabilities of time to event in question, whatever the event may be. So if we let alpha be the event in question, then the time to the alpha event. So it could be the third, fourth, like the third, fourth customer entering a store, etc. Right? It follows what is called the gamma distribution and has two parameters. And these are theta. Well, I call theta here and alpha, but we'll get to those in a moment. So let's talk about the derivation. The derivation, I mean, the way I do it is to use the cumulative distribution function. And then based on, once we have the cumulative distribution function, we'll take its derivative, first derivative, and then we'll get the probability density function. So in this case, the CDF as it's generally written is the probability that the variable itself is less than or equal to a specific value. The capital means variable, the lowercase means a specific value of that variable. So it's the probability in this case where W, if we let W be the time to the alpha of n, the probability, so the CDF is the probability that W is less than or equal to a lowercase w. So if we appeal to the rule of complementary events, the, the complement here is 1 minus the probability that, what's so the complement of this CDF is 1 minus the probability that W is greater than W. So this is still a CDF, right? It's just, just written in a, in a complementary term. So what this suggests is that the alpha, whatever that event is, has not occurred yet in this interval from zero to lowercase w, right? Because we need the big w to mean the alpha event. But in this interval zero to w, we've had up to alpha minus one events occurred. These events are discrete, right? They're countable integers. So we can rewrite this equation appealing to Poisson distribution because the count of the number of events that occur inside some space, whether it's time or actually a physical space, follows a Poisson distribution. So going from, so we're going to summate, right? Going from the zero event to the alpha minus first event, alpha minus one event, not first alpha minus one event. But I guess in total is alpha minus first event. You get this lambda. Lambda is this um, average number of events that occurs in a unit of time. Lambda to the x, e to the minus lambda over x factorial. So here then, so this is this is our this is our our CDF, but we're dealing with an interval of zero to w. So this equation is applying for a unit interval of zero to one. So to apply to this interval zero to w, we have to multiply, to find the average number of events, we multiply lambda by w, right? This is a new scale here. So we just exchange lambda w for the lambdas, and this is our, where we have our CDF so far. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take its derivative, but to facilitate that, we're gonna remove x equals zero, right? So this zeroth event. Well, when x is equal to zero, zero factorial is one, so we have lambda w raised to the zeroth power. That's also once we're left with, well, actually, um, yeah, we're left with e to the minus lambda w, which we end up pulling out right here. See, we pull it out of the summation. Then what we're left is with summing from x equals one to alpha minus one. Okay, so let's see what else. Oh, yes, and I'm also factoring out the, this, um, denominator here, one over x factorial. So I'm left with this nice little term here, which makes it easier, easier for us to take the derivative using the product rule. So that's what I do here. I take the first derivative, I get zero. So the derivative of e to the minus lambda w is, with respect to w, is minus lambda e to the minus lambda w, so that minus and minus becomes a plus, so this becomes positive. Of course, the derivative of constant is zero, so we have this, now we just need to take the derivative of this part here, which I mentioned we'll use the product rule, 
And again, we factored out this one over x factorial. We'll deal with that later, right? So here we, we're using the product rule. So this is the way I set this up, right? So here we take the derivative of what we're doing first is we're taking the derivative of this little sucker right here. So, and then multiplying it by lambda w to the x. And then we're adding to that the derivative of lambda w to the x times this little guy here. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing. So it's this times the derivative of this plus this times the derivative of that term. It's using your product rule. And that's what I get here, right? So I get this really, this mess here, right? So lambda, this lambda w to the x, when we take its derivative, it's x times lambda w to the x minus 1, right? And then you take the derivative of what's inside here, it's lambda. You need that lambda. So we look at all the lambdas here, lots of lambdas. I like saying lambda. So here we are. It still looks beautiful. I factored out this lambda. So there's a lambda e to the minus lambda w common to both of these terms, right? Lambda e to the minus lambda w, lambda e, not the negative, but we just, so we just factor that sucker out here. Okay, so we get this nice little summation left over here. And then let's see what else we do here. Yes, we pull this out of the summation. We'll, we'll obviously, we'll be using it later. We can factor that out, if you will, or pull that out of the summation, I should say. And then here we have left over the sum. Oh, and then I distributed this, this um, quotient, 1 over x factorial. Now, this part here, it's interesting because we have an x, lambda w, x minus 1. So this is, we when we have the denominator by x, we can obviously um, remove this x right here. So we're, the denominator, instead of being x, it's just removing one x. So you got x minus 1 factorial, right? You took care of one of these x's, right? And then we crossed out that x. So that's how we ended up getting the x minus 1 factorial here. Well, we're getting close to being done. So now we have to do some adding. This is the fun part. So we start with x equals 1. When x is equal to 1, well, this is x factorial here. So that's going to be 1. And we have minus lambda w to the 1. It's going to be minus lambda w. So we get minus lambda w is the first term. And then we have here, this term here, when x is equal to 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is just 1. So we get minus lambda w plus 1. In the second term, now we have x is equal to 2. So this is lambda w squared, or minus lambda w squared, divided by 2 factorial. And then when this is, we let x equal to be 2 here. So it's x, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get lambda w. 2 minus 1 is 1 factorial, which is 1. So look at this nice term. Now you'll notice that this pattern starts emerging, right? So like we can cross out these two terms right here, minus lambda w and lambda w, right? So you'll see this is, this is happening in this really nice fashion here. If we let x equals 3, we got lambda w to the third power, right? Minus lambda w third over 3 factorial. 3 minus 1 is 2 factorial, we get lambda w to the 3 minus 1 is 2. And again, this first term and this last term cross out, right? Isn't that cool? Well, I mean, obviously I can keep on doing this till the alpha minus first term. And uh, first of all, I don't know what alpha is at this point. And this is just, you know, I, that's why I, I did this because it's some, we're doing some summing. It sounds kind of funny. So we're going to be keeping crossing out these, like, first and last terms as we go along. So eventually that'll happen here too. What we're gonna be left with is this guy right here and this one, because we're not going beyond that point. So we get one minus, this is negative, lambda w alpha minus one over alpha minus one factorial. And we gotta remember we had these two terms out here, right? This one we have to multiply through, right? So we got lambda e to the minus lambda w well, minus, so l negative lambda e to the minus w times 1 is still the same thing, right? And then, of course, we multiply lambda e 
to the minus w times this term right here, because it's negative and negative, it becomes positive, right? So we get this final term, and then wait, wait, we're almost done. Almost done. Almost done. So this is our final equation right now for the derivative, and we could leave it alone as a PDF, but let's do a couple more things. Let's use theta to be the expected time to the first event. Really, theta is, well, it's, we know that the average number of events in a unit time is lambda, right? So if theta equals the, the time to the first event, it's just one divided. If like, if lambda is, you know, is four, right? And then we divide one by four is 0.25. So that would be your theta, right? So, but that's going to be time between every event anyway, but we'll just say they call the time to the first event. And then we solve for lambda, we get lambda equals one over theta. And we can substitute this back into the equation here, substitute for lambdas. We need these two parameters. So we have one over theta. So we just replace the lambda there, right? One over theta. Oh, and we have a one over theta here because it's minus lambda w. So just do a lot of substitution. We end up being here. So we have this w over theta. So we take out one of the thetas, right? So that's, and it's in the denominator. So we can drop that to the denominator here. So we have theta times theta alpha, because there's already a theta here, right? We had this original one over theta that can also go to the denominator. So when we were multiplying these to their exponents, we add them together, right? So theta times theta alpha minus one. So this is the same as theta raised to the first power. So one minus one is zero. So we're left with a theta to the alpha -th power. We also have this alpha minus one factorial, and this is our numerator, and there, this is our PDF. This is our PDF for the gamma distribution, right? Wow, it's pretty cool. Not, not that hard. One thing though, the, this gamma function reduces to the, to the exponential distribution, yeah, so this gamma distribution, that doesn't have gamma function, excuse me, this gamma distribution reduces to the exponential distribution if, if, now exponential distribution plots the probability of time to the first event, right? Like if we, we wanna know what, what, what time, we're trying to predict, predict when the first customer arrives in a store, right? So we can have enough staff ready there so it's time to the first event. So in this case, alpha equals one, right? So if alpha equals one here, we end up getting lamp. Now I'm going back, by the way, I'm going back to the equation that we had before we substituted, we put in the thetas, right? You notice that I'm going back to this equation here using the lambdas, etc. So if I just substitute one for alpha here, we end up getting lambda e to the minus lambda w, and this is your exponential distribution. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much.